What's up guys, welcome back, James St. Michael here. I hope y'all are doing well. Today we have got a super awesome and special video for you guys. This is something that I've been wanting to put out for a while now. It's not gonna be your typical make a template, none of that. I'm gonna show you guys today the hidden secrets of Ableton. I'm gonna show you the hidden extensions that you can add to your Ableton workflow that just completely revolutionize it and turn it into a DAW two times better than what it was, especially if you are a recording artist and you may need to be doing some vocal work. We all know Ableton isn't the greatest when it comes to that. A lot of people go to Pro Tools and Logic for that, but with the recent changes and addition of comping to Ableton, it's totally revolutionized it for me and it's a DAW that I am always excited to record vocals in now, especially with these hidden tricks and it's just a much more easier doll to work with with these extensions but enough of that i'm gonna go ahead and show you how you can turn ableton into a super doll let's go ahead and take a look at ableton so here we are in ableton now i want to just take a moment to let you know that these tricks and these tips i'm going to be showing you they get better with each and every increment so four and five are personally my two favorites but uh, starting off at one, we have my first tip for you is an extension of Ableton and it's not made by Ableton, it's made by a cool community called LES and it is Live Enhancement Suite. That's what LES stands for and I have it running up here and what this basically does, in short, it can give you a menu that you can load your favorite presets your favorite plugins, favorite chains, whatever it may be. And if you have a mouse, you can right click on that mouse or do it a different way on the trackpad and you can pull up that menu for quick access. So to show you in real time what that looks like. So say I'm right here and I have my vocal channel and I'm like, shit, I need a EQ. I just double click on that and then bam, my favorite Pro Q3 right there loaded just like that. It's mind blowing. And then to top that off, I also use Slick VMS. I love the 76 on there and I'll always use that with like a trimmer sometimes or same thing I just saved a preset called a VMS 76 boom pulled it up my preset that I saved that has the two modules I always start off with typically and I just think that it's such a time saver I didn't have to do command F go look go plugin diving or any of that shit because there's a lot of plugins and this saves so much time you can even categorize and organize this so check this out if you see here I have the Pro Q3 these are my top like my the ones I know I'm gonna use then over here I have my categories I have my subcategories and then whatever I use in there. And I have, you know, as you saw vocals, I have my vocal sends. If I'm over here in my sends and I'm like, man, I don't like this one. I just go over here and I'll go to my vocal sends and I can pick anything else that I want. It's such an incredible tool. It's easily probably my most used and would definitely made me rethink everything about Ableton. And I just want to take a moment to say it doesn't even stop there. That's just the beginning of what LES can do for you in Ableton. You can time your projects. This one I use all the time, close all window plugins, because in Ableton, if you end up with like 10 different plugins open or multiple plugins, you're like, gosh, dang, I got way too much shit up in here. I just need to like see my project because I'm losing it easily. Just option command W, boom, you're back in your project. And I just think that is so incredible how these guys went ahead and made that. And the best part, it's free, free. That's the part that blows my mind. Clear a track, draw notes in a much cooler way, uh, similar to like FL Studio, stay in key, quick place locators, all this stuff. And it just helps your flow in Ableton. And I feel like I can just breathe music in Ableton. It's just so effortlessly with LES. I would not be able to say that I'd be in Ableton as much if it wasn't for LES, and that's the straight truth. So thank you guys who created it. I don't know who did it and I'll be, I'll be sure to link them in, but they are the real <laughs> goats, man, for real. So that wraps up number one, LES. Get it, it's free, live enhancement suite, it'll change your life. Now, number two, utilize the hidden options text feature in Ableton. So I don't know if any of y'all noticed, when you first open Ableton, Ableton is set up in a way where if you change a track, it will still leave the original track arm that you were previously on. And if you start recording on the track that you selected, there's nothing that's gonna be recorded in there. It's gonna be recorded to the track that you previously were on because that's where the record button was and it stayed there. That shit drove me crazy. 
when I first came to Ableton. Like it just drove me insane. I didn't have that problem in Logic. And I was appalled that that was a stock thing. But I found out very quickly that there is a feature called the options text file that you can edit and it will change the way Ableton behaves. The way you find it, if you wanna know, is we come over here to the options text and you go to your users, username, library, preferences, Ableton, and then live version. So if I come over here, we're gonna to go to our users and our user library folder. The way you find that, it's a hidden library. So you have to go to go and then hold down the option key and then you get the library folder that you need to go to. After you're in there, like the path says, we're gonna to go to preferences and then we're gonna click on Ableton and then we have live 11.0 uh, right now. Once we're in here, you find this options text file. Click on that and boom, there it is. You have these little commands that you put in and it changes the way Ableton behaves. My favorite one is tying into the story I was telling you earlier of the record arm thing is enable arm on selection. I make that reference earlier to that story because this enable arm on selection is an example of a command that can fix a problem in Ableton that you didn't even know was fixable. So if we come back into Ableton because that is in the options text file, I'm here on Vox, but if I switch to guitar, the record feature switches with the track selection. So if I'm recording Vox and I go to guitar and I grab my guitar and start recording, I don't have to worry that that guitar won't be recorded because it was still set to the Vox and I was on a different input. So utilize the options text file. There's over, I think, 250 different command modifications you can make to that file to change the way Ableton behaves. And who knows, maybe there's one in there that is gonna fix some problem that you've had with Ableton for a long time, fix mine. So I just wanted to throw that out there for you guys. Now, tip number three is this, the NTPD Essential Notepad for Ableton Live by the coolest Ableton creative I've ever known, Elephant. It's $10, he also has a free version if I'm not mistaken, um, but essentially that looks like this. This NTPD right here and Essentially, it's a notepad for your tracks. You put it anywhere you want on any track. It could be an aux, it could be a send track, instruments track, a audio track, even the master. And you basically put notes for yourself as you work or say that you need to take off and leave and you wanna come back but you don't wanna forget what you were working on, leave a note in Ableton and it's that easy. If you wanna take it a step further, you can even color code these notes, which I think is absolutely just bomb. Why not add some more color and flair to your project, right? And you can change the text. The coolest part though, is that you can automate them. So if you're working on a song and you want a note to pop up at a certain point with the memo that says, hey, don't forget to add a snare here, uh, it'll pop up and let you know that. And I think that is so damn cool. Like it's a way to make Ableton kind of your assistant as well as your DAW. And I don't, I can't, I don't know any other doll that can do that. Um, so I think that this is really cool, and I highly encourage you guys to think about it and incorporate it. Try the free version if it's still there. If it is, I'll leave a link. And if not, trust me when I say the paid version is so worth it. And as a side note, if you don't want to spend ten bucks on that, totally get it. You can do this. Ableton has the ability to leave notes, and I just found this out recently myself. If you right click on your track and then select Edit Info Text, boom, you can edit the notes over here, and you could just put Re Record Bridge. And then we we'll just leave that there. We go back to recording vocals, we hover over that, and boom, we see that note there Re Record Bridge, so we know, oh, we gotta do that. So that's step number three. Use the elephant notepad, and if you don't want to, utilize the edit text info. And I personally think that that is so extremely helpful and a really cool, neat feature in Ableton. And I hope you guys start utilizing it and seeing what I'm talking about. You need a water break. So now we're on to the last two, and these are really, really cool. So step number four is use Melodyne as an external audio sample editor. Ableton doesn't have what Logic and Cubase have. They have audio editors built into them. But nonetheless, Melodyne is the most transparent and natural sounding audio file editor, especially for vocals. So 
if you have it, or even Auto-Tune Pro, or whatever your favorite audio editing suite is, you can set Ableton to edit those files externally and replace them in the project after you've edited them. Because Ableton, like I said, doesn't have a note and pitch editor built in. So, if we come in here and let me grab the mic, we're just gonna do something super simple. Do, 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 do. Something simple like that, right? Little boys to man, old classic stuff. So we double click on this, and obviously you already know, like I said, no pitch editor built into Ableton. But if you come over here to live, and you click on preferences, and then come here to file folder. When you come to file folder, you see this option for sample editor. You're simply gonna browse for your desired application that you use to edit your files. You can use Autotune Pro, or Melodyne or whatever your preference is. Mine is Melodyne, so that's why I have it here and selected. Now, when we double click on this and we go to edit, it's going to open up the file in Melodyne. And then it's as simple as taking them all, double clicking, they snap to the note. Once you got it, you can go to replace audio. It replaced it. Go back to Ableton Live. Boom, replaced. And then we play it. Do, 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 do. Yeah, not the greatest, but you get the idea. So, utilize your favorite sampler and get what you want. Now, tip number five. This one is really cool. So, I don't know if anyone else knows about this. I haven't met anyone that does, but there's a program here called Keyboard Maestro. This thing can really change the game for you with Ableton. If there's any kind of like key combination you wish you had that you can't really do, this thing will do it for you. Basically, it's an automator and like a macro keys program. This is what it looks like. The reason why this is revolutionary for Ableton is because, as you may know, Ableton doesn't really let you customize a lot of things to hotkeys that are comfortable for you. Yes, you can easily come in here and you can press key, select what you want, and then push a button on your keyboard and it's mapped to that. But there's a lot of functions that it doesn't let you map. And one of the biggest ones for me is this option up here the fade menu. I spent two weeks in Pro Tools and I quickly learned that I just don't like Pro Tools. It's not for me, it's not comfortable. But the audio editing features in there are second to none. And the fade tool was just incredible. I wanted that in Ableton, but I couldn't assign the damn thing to any of my keys on here. It just wasn't assignable. So Keyboard Maestro fixes that for me. I went ahead and I created a key here that will allow me to create a fade by using the tab key. So say I'm working on this and I want to just go ahead and cut this and then I want to move it that way. I want to fade there. Bam. Tab. Done. I want to fade there. Tab. Done. Boom. Say that I come over here and I split that but I want to crossfade. Say these were originally two different and I want to do that and crossfade it. Crossfade it with tab. Boom. Fade in. Tab. Boom. Fade out. Tab. Do you see what I'm talking about? Instantly audio editing, sliding and moving audio regions and creating those fades just became so much easier. And I just can't tell you how incredible this was. Went ahead and went all crazy and I started creating all these other ones like V for paste and C for copy just because that's the way it's the fastest in Pro Tools. There is a note that I wanna make about that though. While it did work, the problem that I encountered with this when you're using those actual alphabetical keys is that when it came time to say rename a track I would start typing in and if I had a C it wouldn't go through because Maestro was instead thinking we want to copy something not thinking we want to type the letter C so that's the only disclaimer I want to make about that if you're comfortable using other keys around the letters it's incredible if you need it for a letter uh, you gonna have to figure it out for me and figure out how to do it and get back to me because I couldn't and I think that it would be awesome if we figure that out, someone in the community. But nonetheless, it's still an incredible tool that you can use with any of the other 25 keys on your keyboard. But that's tip number five, use Keyboard Maestro. So I hope these tips and tricks help you guys. If you wanna see more content like this, just let me know in the comments down below an update on the EP. It is almost done. It is coming out very soon. I'm just trying to get everything as felt and nailed down as I possibly can. So expect that soon. But nonetheless, 
If you guys aren't a subscriber, please do consider. If you like the video, consider liking it. If not, it's totally cool, whatever floats your boat. But nonetheless, I hope you guys take care. I appreciate you stopping by. And as always, good vibes and peace. Latest families.